Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Gamma Diagamma. I now apologize for not posting videos regularly, but I th I thought in this video, you know, I didn't have much content, so let's just like do something that's not too hard and uh, which is also fun. It's interesting. So let's get started. The question I would I like to ask you is sine of what angle or value is equal to pi? Well, the, those of you that are pretty much experienced in calculus might say that well, sine is bounded between negative and positive one, so it can't exceed one pi, which is three point one four approximately. Is greater than one, so how is this possible? The answer is, this is possible only when you sort of extend the, the domain to the complex plane. So real, for real uh, values, this is correct. For like complex, you need to do a little more work. So how do we solve for something like this? Well, just call this Z. We're solving for Z. This is a common representation of a complex number is pi well by Euler's formula sine is e to the i z and e to the negative i z over 2i is pi so notice we have e to the i z negative e to the negative i z equals to pi i so I want to make the, the power of the exponential positive so just take a common denominator pi i e to the i z if I just rearrange a few things I get a quadratic in e to the i z so the solution using the quadratic formula is just 2 pi i plus or minus square root of negative 4 pi squared minus 4 divided by 2 so just like reduce a few terms divided by 2 you get square root of 1 minus pi squared well notice pi squared is like around 9 something which is always greater than 1 so we want to like flip this negative inside and then when you separate the negative 1 from the square root we have negative square root of uh, square root of negative 1 which is i and square root of pi squared minus 1 this is e to the i z okay uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take natural log on both sides so what that does is brings the power down natural log of e is 1 we have natural log of pi i plus minus i times square root of pi squared minus 1 we can use this nice property of a natural log if it's like multiply we have natural log of a plus natural log of b so natural log of i plus natural log of pi plus or minus square root of pi squared minus 1 well i can be represented e to the i pi over to using Euler's formula this is just one value you add 2 pi you get another value which will be at I believe 5 pi over 2 but using saying principal value of natural log we have this so we take natural log on both sides we have i times pi over 2 that's natural log of i so substitute that in So divide by i on both sides because we are solving for z so we have pi over 2 minus i because 1 over i is negative i natural log of pi plus or minus square root of pi squared minus 1 and that should be the value of z take either plus or minus that gives you if you plug that into this pi 
you can test that if you want but this is the complex number this is the value one good question is can we generalize this approach this was for just pi can we just like extend it out and check whether it works well let's try that so let's test out the really really general case sort some y and y should be greater than one otherwise you know we can just we'll always have like real values e to the 2i z minus 1 minus 2i y e to the i z equals 0 we just I'm just skipping some steps now it's it's pretty much like we did with pi e to the i z is 2i y plus or minus over 2 cancel some things out i y plus or minus square root of 1 minus y squared e to the i z this is an important point and now since like y is greater than 1 you can sort of take an i out and like reverse the signs and like when we do that and uh, take the natural log on both sides of i z natural log of i y plus or minus i times square root of y squared minus 1 we have natural log of i plus this other factor again natural log of i is i pi over 2 standard value principal value rather and this other term that really didn't do much is just hanging there divide by i with pi over 2 minus i y plus or minus square root of y squared minus 1 okay well are we done well that seems like i mean this seems like the last case i mean the real part is always going to be pi over 2 imaginary part is like natural log of that value plus or minus that value square root of that value squared minus one this is a general structure that we keep we keep seeing now compared to the last example but can we can we like actually solve something like or test this out so sign of something is one half can we test this for like those small cases these these, these cases where like the value is purely real well let's just test our function out anyways sanity check because we know that we know the value should be pi over 6 just by a natural comparison so we have natural log of 1 half plus or minus i because now 1 half is like smaller so we have square root of negative 3 over 4 which is i times square root of 3 over 2 and now we can write this in a, a polar form so let's just consider the positive branch first because it's a plus and minus if we consider the positive branch the radius irrespective of the branch is always going to be 1 the angle now depends on the branch so since we have a positive we have square root of 3 just take like the arc tangent of that it's in the first quadrant right the imaginary part is positive real part is positive the first quadrant this is just pi over 3 pi over 2 minus i times natural log of uh, i sorry uh, r which is 1 e to the i pi over 3 so pi over 2 minus i natural log of 1 minus i natural log of e to the i pi over 3 is just like this natural log of 1 is 0 pi over 2 have a i squared minus and this minus plus pi over 3 which turns out to be 5 pi over 6 or 150 degrees which is also one half 
mind you it's not in the first quadrant but it is one half now let's look for the negative branch with pi over 2 minus i times well the radius remains 1 the angle this time is negative arc tangent because it lies in the fourth quadrant minus i minus i pi over 3 this guy is 0 if pi over 2 minus pi over 3 which is pi over 6 which is like 30 degrees and that that is in the first quadrant so it's like we've like completed our sanity check it really works uh, the idea about choosing the you know this angle to be in the fourth quarter is because like the range of the sine inverse function is in the fourth and the first quarter so if you kind of think about that way It, it it makes a little more sense because this guy's got this guy with the negative branch will, will always give you an angle in the fourth quadrant so it's probably a little more standard anything else you can look at the point I've highlighted if you did not want any of this to like become imaginary you had iz equals I Y. Sorry, uh, this will be a natural natural log. If I'm not wrong. Like if this guy were like Y were like less than one, we would have kind of simplified it in this way. So we would have had natural log of one as the radius i times theta which in in this case would be uh well let's see y over square root of one minus y square subject to the quadrant or whatever i will put this this guy is zero so you see the i cancels out so so you you actually see like irrespective of like what the sign was in the, on the real plane that if you give the condition that like y is less than or equal to 1 you see that you know you sort of always end up with like this real answer because the inverse tangent will like at least the way the inverse tangent for the polar the Cartesian to polar is defined it will never give you some some like imaginary angle some complex angle so it's always going to be real so irrespective of knowing the behavior of the sign in, in the real plane we found this condition for it to be real but so you see this general approach this is how complex analysis works this is how you analyze and like look at each case divide them down reason why only the negative branch give you a standard a value in the first quadrant and, and although pi, five pi by six was right why it's because of the inverse function you know. this, this z that we defined is sort of the sort of like the the really complex version of the sine inverse function all right well, let's see here yeah, here's the sine inverse of z uh, y it's a really really general thing going on here except when we take the negative branch like in real uh, analysis or uh, inverse trigonometry we're basically you know d just constricting the range of sign because otherwise it won't be in invertible anyways 
I think that's, that's pretty much it for this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel, guys. I participated in the Black Pen Red Pen Rising YouTuber Challenge. I got selected as a one of the five finalists. There are gonna be polls, and then he's gonna select two finalists, two winners. So I would just urge you guys to vote for me. Keep a lookout for the poll. It should be out in like I don't know, like two or three more days, two more days, I guess. Uh, and yeah, I mean, there's like. I have a goal of 1000 subscribers and then I'm going to just be super consistent because I, ha I have clear motivation, I have a clear community on YouTube. I'm doing this for your advantage, doing this for the advantage of people, generations to come who might watch my videos and get benefited from them. So please vote and keep doing math, peace out.